Hello, my name is Nicholas. Thank you for checking out my video. The topic is metabolic stress versus hormonal upset. Now, luckily, both of those terms are similar and appropriate to use. Now, I talk to people with masters, PhDs, and they say, there's no such thing as hormonal stress or hormonal upset or metabolic stress. And because I use the term hormonal upset frequently, I often get people rolling their eyes. But when I see them drinking a Coca-Cola, I then roll my eyes back and laugh. You'll hear people talking about metabolic stress. This can be triggered in so many ways that people are just not aware of. And even health professionals, medical doctors, just are not familiar with this. And if they are, they are funded by such and such to where they can't really give you the details if they even know it to begin with. So the one question I get, what is hormonal upset? What does it mean? Basically, in a nutshell, let's just say, I'm going to give a scenario, you drink a beverage that is high in high fructose corn syrup, agave nectar, I don't care what it is, a Coca-Cola, Mountain Dew, whatever connects with you. That can cause a hormonal upset, depending on how much you drink over a period of time, and because we're individuals, our tolerance is somewhat different. Well, what does that trigger? We have to think of insulin. How does insulin work? Generically, some people would say, well, it helps with getting glucose into the cell. Well, what happens if that system is manipulated or does not go the way it's supposed to metabolically? What happens? Well, you'll have glucose in your bloodstream, and you may have a high amount of insulin, however you want to look at it. Or you may not secrete enough insulin. So that can cause a hormonal upset. And because of the research, let's just talk about high fructose corn syrup, is showing that people who consume it on a regular basis will experience central adiposity, adipose tissue, fat around the central area of the body. And for men, well, let's consider estrogen levels. And what about leptin? We know that fat tissue, depending on where it's at and all things, is not dormant. You have a domino effect, hormonal upset. So when that continues down that vicious cycle, it's difficult for somebody who has been living that way for 10 to 15 years to go backwards. Because your brain and everything is connected, hormones act as chemical messengers, and etc. So you just have to consider just that. Now, I don't want to limit hormonal upset just to insulin and leptin. What about thyroid hormone? You understand where I'm going? So women may be more familiar with that. And the one question I get is, well, how is this caused? What are we doing, and et cetera? Well, it's not only you, me, but it's the environment we're in, being exposed to chemicals, and that's basically what we're exposed to on a regular basis. Who are uh, just most likely to experience this hormonal upset or metabolic stress? Anyone, really. Uh, genetics do play a factor. I don't like to throw out good genetics versus bad, because to me, I honestly think if you're human, <laughs> regardless if you have good genetics or not, you can be a victim. And unfortunately, people are just not aware of that. I use high fructose corn syrup or uh, sugary beverages that contain it because people connect best with that example scenario. But there are other examples that I can give, but I just don't want to confuse anybody. So if you see a commercial on TV, for example, NOS, and it's just really, I would like to say, hip commercial that a lot of young men connect to, that will cause you to have hormonal upset. And I don't care what B vitamins are in that drink and etc., whatever they choose to do with it, and it's hypertonic, so I don't know why people would want to drink it before a workout. What about Diet Pop? Some people say, well, that can cause hormonal upset, and it can, because they're linking it with, well, your brain thinks you're getting sugar, but you're not. And what are you taking in? What is the domino effect by drinking Diet Pop? If you're going to a medical doctor or a nutritionist, and they say to you, no, you need to have more willpower. You don't have to drink a lot of Diet Pop or regular Pop or whatever. Keep in mind, have you ever heard of the electronic tongue? Well, food, drinks, whatever you want to call it, is being engineered in such a way to where it's addictive. So willpower alone, throw that out the door. We live in an age to where 
just things are being engineered to attract us, to manipulate brain chemistry. So it's kind of like a drug in a way. Food is often defined by me as the silent killer. It's not tobacco anymore. Food is good. It's available, sometimes cheap. Now, I'm not here to say that I am trying to be the most healthiest person, if there's a such thing. I'm looking for quality of life, not really longevity. So I don't want to seem like I'm doing everything right or wrong. I'm just sharing this information with you so you can be aware. So if you go to your doctor the next time and he says, or she, there's no such thing as metabolic stress or hormonal upset. And if you see them drinking a Diet Pop or Pepsi, whatever, you can look at them and say, well, you know, what happens when you drink too much pop? High sugary beverages, what happens? Your body really doesn't like it. Why do you think you store fat tissue? Why do you think your energy levels are off? You experience fatigue. Some men, just think about it. If you have diabetes, your blood circulation, you may get erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Sorry about that. But those are good examples that can pin them against the wall, so to speak. Sometimes people with master's PhDs just don't have common sense. And I don't want to be one of those people.